by launching into that detour, I don't want to talk about how how badly the Vikings. Uh, oh, something happened to your horn out there in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> thing got broken. Brotherly got love stomped steak. on that crap. Somebody, thing, that somebody crap shoved thing. a cheese steak down it. <laughs> Seriously, like putting a banana in a tuba or something. Well, it just. Um, you know, obviously the Eagles look like the better team. We're the dominant team on the football field. I think the disappointing thing to me about the Vikings, and we'll talk more about the Eagles because we, we des they deserve to be talked about a whole lot more here. It's just that, you know, even with the Eagles dominating, like we saw, there were some moments there where you go, okay, here they go. They can get back in the football game. They can get back in it. And you know, they go down the field and can't get points. And then they block a field goal and they can't get points. And then they get the ball back on a pretty short field and we throw an interception. And then miraculously get it back one more time and then throw another interception. It's just that to me. Drop touchdown pass by Irv Smith. You know, those are the things where, yes, when one team's better, even in the NFL, they're going to make a few mistakes. Can you capitalize on those mistakes and make the game interesting once again? And that was what was disappointing about the Vikings because there was opportunities for them to make this competitive. But, man, like, here, this was my, one of my issues. Did, did, did they not have a plan versus the all-out blitz? I mean, there was obviously not a plan in Minnesota for an all-out blitz. Those are the two things that jumped out to me. They had no plan for uh, when, when the Eagles sent everybody and it was just man-to-man -man across the board, no free safety. And then the other thing, Mike, that just drove me crazy, and, and, and Tony Dungy said this on a group text last night, like it, they had no plan to stop the Eagles' run game or Jalen Hurts' ability to keep the ball off the run game there. I mean, it was a gash session early on in that football game, and the Vikings were not ready to go, and definitely not like they were in week one. The, the defensive performance was embarrassing. We began this conversation talking about how easily the Eagles went right down the field. And that opening drive, everything they did worked. And Now, now, I will say this. By the second half, the Vikings did clamp down. Yeah. There was no scoring by either team in the I second know, half. crazy. The Vikings did slow them down in the second half. But still, by then, the damage was done. And if your offense isn't going to wake up in the second half, then, then uh, it doesn't matter if you're shutting them down. It doesn't matter if you can't. They wouldn't have scored 17 points if they had played a double header last night. So um, th th there was a key moment, though. Third quarter, Vikings come out of the gates. Yeah. Because we learned on Sunday, if a 21-point lead in the fourth quarter isn't safe, if a 13-point lead with a minute 55 to play isn't safe, a 17-point lead with 30 minutes to go That's isn't right. safe. And the Vikings right. came out, no huddle, tempo, moving down the field, and it was that second and 10 play from the 19 in the red zone. If we can play it again, it was the first of Kirk Cousins' three interceptions, primetime Kirk. And both Cousins and Jefferson, Justin Jefferson, the intended receiver here, said it after the game. That was on him. So Troy Aikman was right. Chris, you were right in the group text. Tony Dungy was right. Justin Jefferson needed to jargon alert, cross the face yeah. of Darius Slay there. He's either going to catch the ball or there's going to be a pass interference because Slay squatted at the top of the route. So Jefferson needed to run past him or through him. Right. And, and when he looped around him, that set the stage for the interception. Jefferson acknowledged it. Cousins acknowledged it. That's what happened. And that was such a key moment because it felt like the Vikings had found their footing. It did. And it felt and it felt like it's going to be 24-14. You get a stop. It's 24-21. It's a new game. Yeah, no no question. I mean, it just the way the game is in the NFL right now, 2022 set up for the passing game to take over, 17 points is nothing anymore. I didn't look at that game and go, oh, it's over. Like you said, if they put something on the board right there, you're going to go, oh, there's pressure on Philadelphia. But that is a, a cardinal sin, a no-no right there. From Justin Jefferson, certainly. He knows that too. He knows it. He goes, Yes, there's 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 a trust factor there. And then on that play, Kirk Cousins has a little pressure. So he's got to throw the ball a little bit before he wants to. And these are the things you work on in preseason and training camp. Yeah, you cross the face, maybe, maybe he gets to box him out right with the guy behind him and catches the touchdown pass. More likely in that right there. Yes, it's gonna be some part of some sort of defensive holding pass interference at the very you know worst the ball should just hit the ground and be incomplete period 
Um, but he does kind of the, you know, he kind of jitterbugs it at the top there and goes over the top of him. And Kirk Cousins certainly wasn't expecting that. And, you know, of course, that was that was a big part of the football game, like you said. But that that's a no-no there. And you see, there's the pressure. So he's expecting him to be there. Kind of like, hey, nobody knows more about that route than, than Troy Aikman. Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin, they used to run this thing to death. And he'd throw it right into a spot. And he'd go, well, Michael Irvin, I know he's going to cross his face and use that big body. And I'm going to put the ball where it needs to be. And that'll be it. And, um, yeah, that was a chance for them to gain a little momentum. But then had, like, two more chances, three more chances maybe later on in the second half and didn't take advantage of that by any stretch of the imagination. Well, after that, because, look, if you don't have the interception there and you go to third and ten, even if you don't convert 24 to 10. That's right. At least it's something. Right. At least you got something on the board coming out of the gates in the third quarter. Then they block the field goal. And, hey, kudos to the Eagles punter. Seriously. Running down. That was a t- that that was the touchdown the Vikings didn't get on that drive. That would have changed everything. So the, the Eagles did a great job of of holding firm and just keeping the Vikings from doing anything that they were trying to do in the second half. And you're right. I'm. It's it's like Kirk Cousins wasn't even looking for anyone on those all out blitz plays. He's just throwing the ball up for grabs. You got to have a better plan definitely, than that. Definitely. That so. goes on to Kevin O'Connell too there, right? Like uh, it's just there was just there's there there wasn't anything. It was always just him fading away and wait, let me try to find a one-on-one matchup and throw the ball up that way. And of course, he doesn't have the strongest arm in the world and throwing off his back foot or stumbling backwards. Yeah, it led to a lot of almost disasters there. But yeah, it was a concerning night, you know, for Minnesota. We'll see. It's a you know a, a totally different side of them than what we saw in Week One. But you know, the same thing applies to them a little bit, like we we've always talked about the last few years. And I just wonder if it's going to happen again. Like when the Vikings can't run the ball and they don't have that effect, they just it doesn't ever seem like the pass game can really carry the load. Not that the running game has to go for one fifty or anything like that. But when there's just the threat and the presence, and there wasn't that last night because the Eagles' D-line dominated in the run game, then it becomes the drop-back pass game, and that's when you get concerned about the Vikings and Kirk Cousins and whether they can really make it happen. When Kirk Cousins is your leading rusher for the night. Yeah, that's not good. That's a problem. Right. That's a problem. Right. For other quarterbacks, not a problem. For Kirk Cousins, that's a problem. Two carries for 20 yards. Dalvin Cook had six for 17. His brother James actually had over 50 yards. I think he got a lot of his work in garbage time. He was in the doghouse last week for the fumble against the Rams. But 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 I think he's got the chance to be really good, too. If you you, you be patient with him, let him work through the kinks of being a rookie in the NFL. But Dalvin, six for 17. But once you're down 24-7, you're you're completely away from the pass game. What was disappointing about last night, in comparison to week one, week one, what they did against the Packers – it was easy to conclude maybe things are really going to be different. Last night, for anybody who's been carefully watching the Vikings in the Kirk Cousins era, the inescapable conclusion is it's not going to be any different as long as he's there. It's going to be the same. It's going to be the same. And if you're fine with that, if you're fine with 60-60-2, and two, which is the career Kirk Cousins record as a starter, if you're fine with 9-8 and eight or 8-9, eight and nine, if you're fine with... Maybe we'll be the seventh seed. Maybe we'll be the sixth seed. Maybe we'll get lucky and win in the wild card round before we get the SH-T kicked out of us in the divisional round by whichever team of destiny we come up against in the NFC, whether it's the Eagles or the Buccaneers or the Rams. If we're good with that every two or three years happening, then so be it. So I think that is the core of the disappointment and the resignation. You know, my, my kid is all in with the Vikings and we got to watch the game together last night. And, Poor kid. You know, that it's, it's, you know, I know, I know, <laughs> but, but it just felt like the Mike Zimmer Vikings. That was the problem. Yeah. I it hear felt you. like it's no different. And I think that's the thing that they're going to have to fix. That's the demon. They still need to exercise. We thought the demon had been cast out in week one. It's back. And, and the good news is I don't think they play in prime time again this year. Kirk Cousins is now 2-10 and ten in Monday Night Football. At a certain point, that's not some statistical aberration. That is, when the lights are bright, this guy just can't, can't get it done. He can't rise to the occasion. Some guys do, like Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts. Some guys don't, Chris. Uh, I mean, listen, he's, he's not a superstar, right? He, he's a guy that needs a formula or a certain style of play 
for him to be good about it. He's not going to be like, oh, hey, guys, jump on my back and I'll carry the team. That's not what he is. And when they play like that as a football team, yeah, he's not the kind of guy that can overcome those obstacles like the top-tier quarterbacks in the football and just be like, all right, guys, I got this. I'll start making plays. I'll get outside the pocket. You know, I'll push the envelope with a few of my decisions and squeeze some balls into tight windows. It's not his game. Yeah, it's not to be expected. You know, but we'll see. I mean, again, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to, as a friend of yours, try to talk you off the ledge and just go, hey, let's not judge it too quickly here. It's the start of a new era. They are changing things over here. There is still some of the Mike Zimmer players vibe. They got to get their own guys in here all together. Let's see where it goes, certainly. I know we have definitely heard from enough people that there's a, a, a better vibe, a new energy up there in Minnesota. That is a good thing, definitely. But that was disappointing across the board. You know, I didn't look at that last night and go, oh, that was a Kirk Cousins issue. You know, there, Yeah, he wasn't great. I know that. But, you know, you talk about, hey, Irv Smith. Irv Smith catches that go route, right? That was what, the, the first half. Right. You know, there's it's, it's 14, seven. The Vikings just go down and score to make it 14, seven. They get the Eagles stop and then there they go. And you got a third and short and Irv Smith can't win a little one on one over the middle against a linebacker. Troy Aikman did a great job of kind of pointing that out. So they need some help, too. It wasn't just Kirk Cousins. The whole team played like crap. They got out coached, out physical. And this was a huge moment in the game. I mean, that's, again, there's only so many opportunities you get like this in a football game. This is what gets momentum going. It gets the team a new life. And, oh, the okay, hey, we were playing bad, but here we go now. And that never happened for the Vikings. They were very close a few times with the block kick and some, you know, getting the ball back, but just couldn't get over the hump there to really make it competitive. It's a handful of moments in every game. Three or four go one way or the other, and it can be the difference between winning by 17 and losing by 17. It, 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 it comes down to making plays or not making plays in those key moments. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.